I'm delighted to say Paul Bellew is with us. He's the uh, Galway Hurling Committee Chairperson. And uh, Paul, good morning to you. How are you? Morning, Ger. Owen, how are you doing? Yeah, very good. Um, it's been... Uh, you guys have been responsible for one of the biggest bombs going off in the Hurling Championship in an off-season that we can remember, where out of nowhere, Henry Shefflin was announced as your new inter-county manager. Um, how did you manage to keep it secret? Yeah, you say out of nowhere. Um, I've heard things flying around like 11th hour and... I wish it was. I wish it was that quick for us because um, it certainly felt a lot longer. Um, look at we, there was a media storm around this Galway appointment going back for six weeks. Let's be very honest about it. Um, a few of us had a certain job to do and uh, we made a commitment from the start that we would do what we had to do, keep our powder dry. There was times we had wanted to come out given the amount of nonsense that was floating around. But we had to concentrate on what we do. And I suppose just one thing to be very clear, we we kept our position on every candidate the exact same. Um, there was uh, a lot of attention on certain candidates uh, that didn't come from us, uh, to be fair. It didn't maybe come from them either, but uh, we treated everyone the same. And, um, you know, we, we, we engaged them and we met them, uh, sat down with them. Everybody went through the same process. And as I said, it came from other sources rather than ourselves. So. You know, it's it's nothing more uh, exciting or glamorous than that, sure, I'm afraid. Well, we, we might get into the, the, the bits and pieces of that as well, because obviously in the middle of all this, we were having fairly lengthy conversations about Galway hurling, and I, I I make no bones about being fascinated since the 1980s and going to watch all Ireland semi-finals when Cyril Farrell was in charge with that great team. I think Galway have been one of the most interesting uh, stories and the biggest stories in Irish sport, given the quality of success that you've had at underage in particular. So... Um, when you're talking about the stuff that was floating around, we were certainly contributing to some of that. And uh, I, I know that from your perspective, you'd like to get the story out about how progressive your board are and what you're actually trying to achieve. So maybe you might tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, and look, that that's it. And look, you're not going to get the uh, this county board official coming on uh, ranting and raving. And look, I was long enough on the other side ranting and raving at Galway County Board, but I suppose my, my defence is I always did it uh, on the convention floor or at delegate meetings and people had the right to reply. And, you know, I certainly had my say and then I decided to do something about it and, and get involved. And I think it's my 20th month involved in two COVID years and it feels like 20 years. But um, look, there was a piece, let's be straight up about it. I'm going to be very direct and forthright about it. It was it James's piece and look at Eye of the World, the time for James. We've had some good chats in the last few days, so this isn't coming on at tit for tat. But I think he was upset and, and passionate about maybe where things were going. And it just felt like things were in a bit of a time warp from a few years ago about some of the accusations that were been, been put around and... I'm coming on today just to set the record straight. Galway GA, as you said, has been dramatic. It's time to get boring now. Um, we uh, we just want to point out what is going on and has been going on for the last few months and even over the last year. And, uh, you know, it has become this bit of a punch bag, Galway GA in general, not just Galway hurling and well, financial issues, et cetera, et cetera. And we haven't done well in getting the message out about what's moved on from two years ago. And maybe today is maybe a bit of a chance to do that. And okay. look, there'll be people out there typing into thing going again, gangsters, et cetera, whatever, the whole lot. That narrative has to change, and, and it changes now, so I you, suppose. You, you were involved in, in uh, or you are involved in, in making sure that it, this is a more boring conversation in future where the administration of the sport isn't being spoken about as much as, as what's happening on the on the field of play. So you were involved, for example, in bringing Mazars in and, and getting the corporate governance back to where it needs to be. Yeah, there was there was four of us, I suppose, really that had a lot of work to get that out and uh, very proud of what was achieved in that. And we're moving on from that. And as I said, two of those people are now, one is the county treasurer, one is I'm Hurley Committee Chairman, not county board per se, but we're we're involved. These were the people that we were looking for to step up, etc. And I think when we just heard some of the stuff the last few weeks, it's as if nothing has changed. But, you know, in the GA, it's very frustrating for us as well. It takes time to change. But just on the hurling front, I suppose your question is, why have we won loads of minors and not won anything else? I think that's what we all ask. And we probably were a little bit behind the curve. But I suppose just as a few things that I, I would like to point out, like Henry's appointment is brilliant, but it's only one facet of what we're doing. And I think we released a statement uh, last week and I think it was picked up locally anyway. Maybe the last paragraph was one of the more exciting lines, you know, that it that it com combines our ambition to create a sustainable player pathway um, and for development. So just a couple of the things that are happening out there for listeners and, and for, for Galway people in particular, you know, We've put Lucas, you know, Lucas is very highly regarded. Lucas is no longer, you know, the Galway 
Senior Hurlers SNC guy. Lucas is now the head of athletic development for Galway GA Senior Under 20 Minor and our new adult development squad um, for the next three years. So Lucas's remit will be to design, implement hurling specific SNC for all squads and oversee the other members of the SNC team. And just to give you an example, Jer, we hired another SNC person uh, three weeks ago. Um, to focus on our development squad and to support our underage. And along with that, for 2022, we'll have two other uh, people specifically assigned to our minor and our under and our under 20. So that'll be four pretty much full time for next year, SNC people. And then we'll have a five team intern to focus on that as well, where we bring in people in college, they support the guys there, they upskill, they learn, and we actually bring them back into our system then. That's the idea that it'll reproduce. So. Long story short, Galway, uh, Galway Hurling will have nine people working on their SNC for 2022, from 17 years of age up to adults to incorporate over 100 players. I think in um, fairness, that was one of the points that James was making. He was concerned that Lucas might be lost to the system given the, the domain knowledge that he's built up. So that's great to hear that that, that has been, um, been yeah, sorted out. And, and, and it has been underway for a while and that's been in the works. And in fairness, I will say this, I'm not going to come out and advertise something that's being done until it's done i'm probably out a bit earlier but it had been done the aims have been shared with the clubs maybe that's not getting through and i understand that but as i said we weren't going to come out crowing about something before it started more so we want to complete it the fruits of this will be i think post henry shefflin uh, to be honest with you and i suppose the biggest other piece of what we've done is we've we've created now a formalized adult development squad and that's focused on player pathway from under 20 onwards in particular, because we have been losing these guys. And we're going to have a point when we have all managers in place, we're going to sit down and we're going to appoint the head of this adult development squad uh, who will manage it in conjunction with the senior under 20, 17. All on the one page, all working together, no more managers going on solo runs, not speaking together, not getting together, not integrating into one vision. They'll all be combined in a charter and the charter is development, development, development. And the aim of this, lads, is to keep guys that maybe just don't make it straight away. You know, the late developers that maybe just physically aren't there, hurling-wise aren't there. So they will have three facets to what they're doing. They'll be kept in the underage system. They'll be exposed to Lucas's and team of SNC. Uh, to nutrition, basically best practice on that and to best practice hurling. So they will have coaches on the development side. They'll be brought in and out of the seniors in the 20s if they're not quite there. They stay in the system and they get every chance that in a couple of years, if this guy has made the step up, he follows his program, will be giving them matches against the, the other teams. In he comes, he's ready, he's physically ready, he's mentally ready, which is very important. And he can come in and his hurling is up to speed. Um, so that adult development appointment is probably maybe maybe it's the biggest one we'll do uh, in the next three months. It won't get as much attention, but that's where we are, and that's what's been going on in Galway. That's a plan, and it sounds like you know I'm always on the show talking about um, we always talk about the best in class, and so the Doe's football, and now it's Limerick hurling, and before that it was Kilkenny hurling, but no one's ever no one's ever become successful by aping what somebody else is doing. You have to do your own thing, and it sounds like you've got a plan there to to keep the players from disappearing and from not being aware of what the responsibilities will be when they eventually make it to the senior squad and that kind of brings me nicely is that is that a way in, in some ways of stepping outside the club structure and, and trying to bring some unity there because one of the other points that James made and I think it's probably holds for most counties who aren't winning all Ireland is that if the clubs run off the championship they're happy and that's their that's their interest and we, we've seen factional self-interest is at the heart of a lot of the organisation where if so long as my parish or my club within the parish is doing well then actually I'm alright Jack and if, if you're involved at county level you need to think separately from those clubs so how do you get the clubs who have very very intense rivalries in Galway to think a little bit laterally and to think about the county for at least a portion of their, of their thinking time yeah, well, we have to do much better with them as well. And I think what they need, and this will be part of Lucas's role, is we need to upskill the clubs in terms of, uh, again, from an SNC nutrition point of view. That That's the key area as well, because there, there's plenty of hurling coaches. There, that's all very, that's very good. But it's to show them this vision that we do have for Galway, that we realise potential uh, among those players. And I think the key point is, is, is what you touch on. If these players that come in and we widen the net, sure, they go back, if they don't make it for Galway, they go back to their clubs, 
you know, of a much higher standard in terms of personally, hurling wise, expertise wise. And that's what brings your clubs with you. And just on the club championship piece, you know, it's it's not what it used to be in terms of the, it's it's still one of it's still the most popular club championship in the country, the biggest club championship. You'll see that from our gates, our streaming figures last year. Every and the rivalry isn't as uh, as bitter and intense as it would have. That's probably another another uh, myth that needs to kind of go as well, along with a couple of other things, you know. And just while I am on it, because one thing we have had financial issues, we've had governance issues. That sometimes gets tied in with resource, and I think it's as good a time anyway to set the record straight and I won't be too popular for doing this um, and I wasn't too popular uh, probably in my own county board when I did it but you know the go- this people will laugh at this and I'm I'm waiting for the reaction later on today Galway Hurlers are probably in the top two resource squads in the country now it's not too often that said and most people don't believe it but I spent a lot of time the last few weeks talking to managers ex-managers other county board officials in other counties um I've had some of the worst three weeks of my life, but two of the best three as well. The hurling public would talk to me. Uh, we're we are somewhere in the region of twenty percent over most teams and what we make available and supply to get our team to an All Ireland final. We consistently have backroom teams in excess of of twenty people. Uh, our budget to get to an All Ireland is over seven hundred k if needed to be, and that's a budget. It's a target. It's not meant to be spent if it doesn't have to be, but it's there. Uh, our players are exceptionally well looked after, which they will all testify to. The relationship between, I, I can speak from the hurling committee side and the players, is as as good a relationship as I've ever been involved in from a work point of view or a amateur point of view. And, you know, again, people might be shocked at hearing some of that, but that is the facts. And uh, as I said, just because there's debt issues and COVID, you would have a cash flow issues and huge challenges. We remain one of the best resource squads in the country. Taking that into account then, Paul, is there uh, necessarily a target that gets set out for the managers to say you have to be winning all Ireland's? No, that target will not come up in my vocabulary um right. our simple ambition is over the next few years in every facet is that we maximize our potential in every area and that the only reason we get beaten is because a we're not good enough would be a bounce of a ball the idea over the next few years was we want to be hitting all ireland semi-finals probably four in every five if we're good enough we'll win them but i'll promise you this you won't be able to blame county board you won't be able to blame lack of money you won't be able to blame um well, you know, you won't blame the players. You won't be able to blame preparation. We will have everything in place that makes us reach our potential. If we're good enough, we're good enough. I think the best way to, and I chatted to Eddie O'Sullivan about this. Eddie was on our, our panel. Is you're looking at maybe um, a Green Bay model or something like that, that you're getting to the business end every year because everything is in place. And if you can get over the line, you get over the line. But no excuses now anymore. No nonsense. No sideshows. Galway loves drama. It loves politics. But needs to stop now all on the one page all going forward together I said myself and James at this conversation last night and as I said Galway hopefully is about to get very boring and uh, that's, we, that's, we hope they that's don't but, uh, I know you hope <laughs> they don't but I certainly hope they do Just, uh, this, is probably, this is probably not the question to ask then if you're looking to keep it boring but is Galway's Aaron Rodgers aka Joe Canning going to make a return <laughs> uh, see this absolutely nothing to do with me that's a decision for the manager the manager manages um, and we support and facilitate them mm. behind the scenes and we stay out of that stuff. Um, we don't pick that. Would we all love to see it? Of course we would. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. And Paul, to go back to um, to getting Henry Shefflin involved, right? So we've obviously seen Henry's career as a, a manager um, come about and be very successful very early on. But I suspect that if, if he thought there was going to be any bullshit in the background, then he also would have said, you know, thanks but no thanks. So I guess you coming out and telling us about what is in the background background and the the long term plans you have with strength and conditioning in a way um it sounds like you kind of had to put those in place to be able to get somebody of Henry Shefflin's stature interested in the first place yeah and we have to do it anyway not, not even Henry Shefflin's stature if anyone took the job in Galway these are the things that had to be done but you're right in what you say in that you know again let's come back to some of the narrative out there not only Henry Sheffield, the other three candidates, and we forget about the two brilliant Galway candidates we had in this mix as well. You know, we sat down on the Sunday after we finished a certain round of interviews and we all looked at each other and we said, we're in a good place here. Whoever we appoint as Galway manager, even before our final interview, we're happy now. Um, but, you know, the likes of Henry or whoever else, 
they don't get involved um, with the with the with the group of chancellors. You know, they saw what was been done. They saw how it was done. They saw it was in the background. And again, about the eleventh hour appointment, the amount of conversations that go on before people actually proceed to formal interview, it's there's there's four to five hours in that prep you know these guys don't want to make these decisions lightly anymore it's a huge commitment not even if you're coming from kilkenny if you're coming from if you're coming from athan <laughs> it's a huge commitment so all those things have to be in place and they have to be happy with those things and that's the standards you know you need to reach and um, what was the story of me hold on who because it looked like he was interested at one stage then he was out and then he was back in yeah um but again uh, that's narrative on the media side i can only tell you what i what, what uh, how it went down for us and i've told the delegates this uh when we reconvened two weeks ago you know everybody assumed that Michal Michal was the front runner the favorite i suppose he was the chosen candidate among us all to be straight up about it when the vacancy arose um again i i, I took this position 20 months ago i had no previous involvement i never overlapped with Michal's time so um i i had a i sat down with him i had a fresh approach to it I, I to be straight up to him as well in fairness to Michal and there's been an awful lot of noise out there and it hasn't been fair to Michal it hasn't been fair to Galway County Board uh, and it spun the things outside of this and then you know it almost became a one versus the other when nothing could be further from the truth and again that won't suit the narrative but um, I actually rang Michal and asked him to go forward there was meant to be nominations to the club or whatever I, I rang him and said we want you to be the next Galway hurling manager um, and he goes look let's let, let's just sit down uh, and he gave me that courtesy and, you know, we all know the dangers of assuming, lads. And uh, I suppose we sat down for nearly two hours. We had uh, a brilliant conversation um, and it probably became apparent to me as well that I was shouldn't have assumed um, and that he wasn't maybe in the position to come back that we had thought he was um, for personal reasons. Timing wasn't right. What he said to me in terms of what he did for me in terms of he saw where things were going with development wise. He had seen the document that was put out fully supportive of it uh, and he's asked in any way he can help that he will get behind and that's you know again that's not the fun story I presume people would much rather if we were at loggerheads and and what have you then we had spin off that he made demands that negotiations broke down negotiations didn't even start I did ask him to take the weekend to consider it and I know he did and I know he deeply did and he came back to me on the following weekend and I said are you definitely done is there any one thing I can do he said there's nothing you can do uh, you know, it's it's not now. And then we had all the rumour, conjecture and the damage it did. And again, not caused by Michal and not caused by Hurling Committee or County Board. And it just did so much damage. And I think the James interview was a byproduct of that. You know, everyone should do whatever we can. We did whatever we can, but it didn't even get to the point of discussing budget. You know, that's that's the bones of it, lads. And that's all. I, that's I can only give you my version of what happened and that's what it was for me. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. And then you mentioned the the candidates from Galway. Were they the existing underage managers? Is that They, they were. I mean, that's what I said. It. I would not betray any confidence, but it's been well out there now. I would not have commented on Davey ever until he, you know, came out himself on the Late Show and said it. But the boys were brilliant. You know, they really put their best foot forward for the role. Um, they have a huge role to play in Galway Hurland going forward in, in numerous capacities. But yeah, they were the other two. But the standard was exceptionally high. Right, and what was it in the end that made you want to go for Henry? Yeah, th this is like it's been bigger than like I thought it'd be big, but uh, it's it's been bigger than than uh, we ever thought. But we were concentrated on Henry the manager, not Henry the player. And I know people might find that hard to believe. And look, he, obviously his player reputation does. But you know, <clears throat> he was on our radar two years ago. I was involved in the selection committee the last time um, as a delegate, and um, he was on our radar. Um, and basically, once the Michal piece wasn't going to go ahead, you know, I just took out the blank sheet and wrote a couple of names down. And I'm easy to say now. And would I tell you the same about someone else? I probably would. But I'll tell you the truth. Uh, we got the number one candidate that we wanted. And he was put down at number one. And when we interviewed him, just I knew from the conversations with him, you know, a serious high degree of intelligence, the questions he asks, um, just his view, like there's a simplicity to what he's going to bring, I think. You know, it's going to be hurling. I know that sounds a bit basic, but, you know, he's he's smart, he's modern, but there's just this Kilkenny um, ruthlessness, I think, that sits behind it that impressed us, you know. Um, his experience with Bally Hale, Eddie O'Sullivan focused an awful lot on culture, dressing room dynamics, you know, maybe our dressing room as well needs that bit of a shake-up. And, you know, he's dealt with some stuff like that as well. And how, he to how he'd approach that just 
just blew us away, really. I think that's an underrepresented or under um, misunderstood part of the Ballyhale thing. Is like everybody assumes, oh, does that one all all Ireland together? But it's a club. We all know yeah. that clubs have. Uh, rivalries within them, within them and all that kind of uh, one family somebody sits in the wrong place something happens and he walked in and, and solved that re- relatively quickly and they reached their potential so if you can do something similar with the dressing room in Galway then uh, we're in for a very exciting period it sounds a little bit like it was a, a kind of um, a, a dating thing where you're both feeling each other out because you both <laughs> kind of need to make sure that actually you, you yeah. both want it like you needed to prove to him but he kind of needed to prove to you too because you know it's not like there was a track record of intercounty management there too so it's a, it's a leap yep. of faith collectively yeah well look we have a very it is it is and it was very you know as I said I spoke to him probably for four or five days uh, myself didn't tell anyone um, we extended it out to maybe to four to five people uh, on the Friday to say look this is a go um, but everyone had to go through the interview process there was no uh, shortcuts for anyone and you know that's when he agreed and the others did as well and we had very we had stringent criteria as so we had Eddie um, whatever I come from a recruitment background myself so it was going to be done in a certain way so there was a lot of feeling out uh, a lot of trust had to be built up and uh, and that was done but uh, the, inter- the interview piece is kind of the last piece you, you if anything breaks down it nearly breaks down in the in the period up to that, if you know what I mean. So um, it's a fascinating process. But if you do it right and you do it with a bit of structure, you'll get what you need in the end. Yeah. So I, I guess it, it's been really interesting talking to you, Paul, because like we don't get often insight into um, what happens. And you know, I'm delighted that you felt comfortable enough telling us these details because I, I think it does give a, a, a full picture of exactly what you guys are doing in the background. And I, I also understand that you can't explain to everybody everything that you're doing along the way so I don't know is there if you know in, in future is there a way that if you were to go back 20 months when you did take the job first would you would you change how you bring people along or is that actually something that you, you couldn't do no it's something you couldn't do and again this would have all been nipped in the bud if there wasn't a manager process going on you see I think what went on here and I said, I'm moving on now. Everyone, Galway is going to move on together. Um, we've had these calls. Like Henry's an extremely unifying figure as well. Like the the stuff been worked on development. That's been worked on throughout the year, etc. Things blew up over the manager appointment. The manager appointment became political, Jer. So I I wasn't going to come out in the middle of it and start to tit for tat or a back and over and jeopardize the manager process. We had a job to do. So um, no, we keep the clubs updated. I think publicly. Um, you know, in that maybe social media world or whatever it is, just to stop the abuse or the misunderstanding. We just have to get our message out better. But we will, but we'll do it when it's when things are done and I'm happy that it's in a place that it's going to thrive. You know, there's too many people out there telling us what they're going to do. I'm only interested in doing things and and the, that's the key piece. What, uh, the, the bit about, for example, the um, the adult development squads and, and that kind of, uh, that how the strength and conditioning and nutrition and coaching is all going to, those pillars are going to help with that and making sure that that player pathway exists. You, you know, you didn't, you didn't come up with that in the back of a... Uh, no. So that was obviously in, in gestation for a period of time. Is, is that the type of thing, maybe you are telling the clubs about this and it's just, that doesn't filter out. And I don't know if that is a model that other counties are using or whatever, but wherever it's come from, it's a good idea. Is that the type of thing that in, in retrospect or in future, you'll go, okay, these are the things we're doing. And then, then you get to challenge people, well, what are you going to do to help contribute? Exactly that. And that's kind of where we're at on some of it. And this will be launched. I think we need to do something to say the clubs to get behind it. Like you kind of touched on earlier on, how do you bring them along? This now will be launched. And maybe we have to just do that little bit more of a PR element and let it come out everywhere. But you're right. And then it's bring people with you. And on the adult, like I, I'm not an expert on any of this stuff. I know as much about S&C as... You know, I, I don't. Um, nutrition, I don't. But I know it's important and it's about putting those people in place. So I have a lot to do on the adult development squad side of, you know, we'll, that thing will probably only reach its potential over two years, I think. We'll set it up. It'll be a bit of a shaky structure. But we're already talking to people, you know, and the likes of the Mihals to get their input in a, when we have all the managers in place about improving it and then bringing everyone with you. That That's going to be the key. I think, all right. Yeah. Paul, great stuff. Really, really fascinating. And congratulations on getting your man because it has absolutely electrified the hurling world. And I think it has had this kind of bizarre crossover appeal where all of a sudden 
in the depths of winter we're like ooh what's going to happen in next year's Leinster Hurling Championship which yeah, is not all we're missing is a game exactly think, <laughs> at the moment. yeah yeah and listen thanks a million lads for the time as I said it's just good to, to, to put the story out there change the narrative hopefully it does but uh, that's what's what's going on in Galway and hopefully now uh we won't have to talk about Galway again for another three or four years. Well, we wish you the very best. If we don't talk to you for another three or four years, then you're, obviously things are going great. But hopefully we will check in at some point. Thanks a million. Cheers, lads. Thanks very much.